Hi, this is Faxi Naru. Welcome to another video as part of um, modular tutorial using the scope modular to teach uh, digital modular synthesis techniques. So right now we are going to um, build a three oscillator synth and we're going to be looking uh, at a little bit of um, the different uh, ideas and concepts and different approaches different companies and products have taken with their synths in order to um, create three OSC synths. And I guess the, ba the, the most classic of them all is probably the Minimoog, uh, which we will, we're looking at right now as um, it's a Minimax clone, which is um, Sonic Core's implementation of the Minimoog in the d digital domain. Let's not get into whether it sounds like a Moog or not. I mean, we don't really care. You know, we're just trying to um, look at what, what, um, what is provided and how it is routed and what it's doing and um, kind of making our own modular interesting three oscillator synth, um, kind of using this not as something to clone, but more as just like a basic idea. Just I want to show you what a three osc synth is like. So um, this is the Minimax. It has um, additional features that the Minimoog doesn't have, and they are over on this screen. And basically, they've just attached a chorus, a flanger, and um, a delay, um, dual delay to it. So. Other than that, it's pretty much um, the same implementation. The second synth we're going to look at is, um, I found like a picture from the net, um, is a Novation K station. And I do have this um, synth. If you want, you can look on our YouTube channel. And um, we did a review on the Novation K station. Um, so you can find it online as well. But um, let's, get, uh, let's get beyond that. And um, different from the Minimax and the Minimoog. Um, it is also a three oscillator synth, but it has some other things inside. It has a whole effect section of itself. It includes delay, reverb, chorus, distortion, EQ, panning, and um, a vocoder inside as well. It does have um, the ADSR is a bit different uh, as far as parameters that it are available, LFOs. Things are a little bit different. Um, there is the option to choose 12 or 24 dB, and there is an overdrive circuits inside the filter and some other stuff that the Minimax doesn't have. So as you can see, they have taken, um, and of course it's digital, while the original Minimoog is analog and the Minimax is trying to um, kind of sound analog. Don't know if it, it does sound great. Don't know if it succeeds or not in sounding like the Minimoog, but yeah. Um, kind of doesn't even try to clone. No, it's a digital synth that sounds like, sounds and acts like, um, it's own, it does its own thing. It doesn't even try to sound like a mini Moog or whatever. So um, the first thing, obviously, uh, you see both both of these synths have um, three oscillators because they are three osc synths, though, and they um, have the basic uh, kind of analog subtractive synth waveforms, you know, like a triangle, saw, square, and all that. So we're going to do the same. You know, we're going to take three multi oscs. We might change it. Let's let's take a look. Let's first start with this. So here are three um, multi oscillators that we've taken out. So that's the first thing we've taken out, and we also know that for sure we're going to need a MIDI brain. Now, um, Scope has uh, inside three of those MVCs that serve as a MIDI brain that will let you control the MIDI information incoming into the patch and actually um, splitting it into the different information that you'll need into gate and note and frequency, etc. So um, there's MVC A, MVC B, and MVC C. If you look at MVC A, it'll have um, portamento on it and portamento time, and MVC does not have that. Um, MVC C, as well as having the portamento and time and all and the portamento circuit, it will have also unison and the ability to choose how many um, voices are uh, allocated to unison and the uh, unison detune and it could, it could also output um, a certain key instead of the, um, the notes. It could output gate, doesn't change. So um, we're going to use MVC C and the reason for that is because of the unison that we get inside that really adds a lot of color to the synth. Um, the Minimax does not have unison, but the K station does. So we're going to borrow from the K station's concept in this um, other module that we're taking out. So let's connect the um, 
the MIDI in that is incoming into the patch into the MVC. So now the MVC actually gets the, the right information that it needs to process. So we've just done that. That is connected, and we'll set it aside for now. Now let's look back at um, both the K station and the Minimax. They both have the ability to modulate the pitch of the oscillators. So there are many ways you can do this. You know, you can use um, one pitch bend module, which we'll take out, show you right now, actually. So pitch modifier, and there are different pitch modifier modules. Two, and show you just the difference between two of them for for an example. So pitch modifier B has two modifier inputs, and pitch modifier D has four of them. So if you if you use D, you can attach like four LFOs. If you use this one, you can attach like an envelope and an LFO. Uh, basically up to you, but we're gonna we're gonna use just two. I think it's enough. So let's put the pitch um, the pitch uh, modifier module right here above all the oscillators. Now the option we have is is this: we can use one pitch modifier and connect it to each of the frequency inputs of the each of the oscillators. And then the amount knob, like we will set our LFOs, and then the amount knob will affect all of the oscillators in the same way. Not only that, um, the same modulator will affect all of the oscillators in the same way. So let's do something that, um, well, actually, the, the, the K station does have that, actually. The K station has the ability to change, um, to modify the pitch of each oscillator. So let's be as cool as the K station. Let's um, have three pitch modifier modules. This way, we'll have um, one for each of our oscillators. So we've taken all three of these out. Now, we do know that um, the frequency, the notes that you're playing, they have to reach the oscillators. We can make this connection already now, because we have all the modules we need just for this particular thing at the moment. So we're going to connect the frequency that the MVC is taking the MIDI, and it's splitting it, like you said into different information. So we're going to take the frequency, which is the note information, basically, of the pitch modifiers. And you're probably guessing that we're going to connect the output of the pitch modifier to each. Oops. These connections are made, or will be receiving pitch from um, from the MIDI patch. So this is set up this way. And now we have some decisions to make. Do we want one LFO to connect to each of the oscillators? Do we want one envelope to connect to each, uh, to all of the oscillators? Do we want like each oscillator to have its own envelope and its own LFO? You know, it can get really crazy. We can do a ton of stuff. Um, let's see. Over here on the Minimax, they have actually like um, oscillator three and kind of with the uh, modulation wheel are what is actually like driving the whole LFO circuit. We're going to do it um, in a different way. We're going to look at the Novation here. And the Novation has two LFOs, and they are routable. So um, what it means is like you can route LFO one to the filter, to the, to the pitch, to whatever, and as well, LFO two the same. You can kind of. Well, I think I may be mistaken. I'm sorry. I think L LFO2, yeah, OK, I'm sorry. It's hardwired. LFO2 affects the filter, and LFO1 affects the pitch. Um, so yeah, it is hardwired on the Novation, but there are two LFOs. So we're going to take, um, let's see. Let's take out LFOB in the previous video that we've just made that uh, there are there, there is also LFOA, and there are many other LFOs. Now, the um, the multi LFOs, uh, why I choose, why I chose them is we want an LFO with the basic waveforms, and we want an external input to be able to make it a synced LFO, so it's going to be able to be synced to MIDI timing. And these particular LFO modules have it. They just a sign LFO does not have it. There are many uses for a non-synced sign LFO. This is actually the LFO, the, the simple sign LFO is the one I use the most, and I'll show in other videos. But for now. We're going to need one with um, ability to sync frequency, and um, I don't. Uh, we can use it. Um, I'm not going to show it in this video. We 
but the L4A does have inputs to that are, enable you to modulate the speed of the rate, the speed or rate, whatever you want to call it, of the LFO. But let's just be modest here and use an LFO B. Um, we have two LFO Bs, and let's just let's just leave them right here, right now. Let's set up the MIDI clock for them, so we'll be able to sync them. PM. So for this, we have the MIDI clock, and I've shown it before. And the MIDI clock module um, basically provides MIDI timing. You can set it to external or internal timing. I've mentioned before that the scope handles much well if you set it to an internal timing and just put it on the same BPM as your sequencer, and it'll um, track much better than if you send it to external timing, and it'll be a little bit jittery. And then you need to um, take the information from the, from the MIDI clock a clock signals into frequency signals that are divided properly and will give you the exact right rate to be on your BPM and on the right division which you set here. So we're going to connect each LFO and now if we turn on this button they will be syncable LFOs connect of the LFO have the option of having them be re triggered or non-triggered LFOs. Each one, of course, button to trigger that option. So let's look what else do we have on a 3 osc synth. Before we get to the filter, let's get to the envelopes, which are a must, of course. So the first thing we need is an amplitude envelope and a way to control, actually, the volume. So in scope, um, we need two modules for this. We need a VCA module, and we're going to take out a linear VCA for this. And um, we're going to need an actual envelope, and we're going to take out a classic ADSR envelope for the volume. So, and we're going to connect the ADSR to the input, the modulation input of the amplifier. So, the envelope is controlling the volume of the patch via this this envelope, and this is actually the amplifier itself. Timing to be able to know that it needs to be triggered as soon as you press a MIDI note. So this has to be connected, and I've mentioned that before as well. So uh, we have the VCA set up with its envelope, and like we just looked, there is also a mod envelope, both on the, um, on the, on the K station, they call it a mod envelope because it can be used to control various things. Called a, um, it's just a filter envelope because it's hardwired to the filter. Hello. Um, let's just leave it at that for a second. Remember that we have it because why? Why? The reason is um, that I'm thinking that we might want actually additional envelopes for the pitch that we've set aside. Not sure yet what we're going to want to do. Let's set it aside. Remember that for the filter, it's it's going to go to the filter. Now the question is, do we want it to go to the pitch as well, or do we want more envelopes? Let's start by taking out the filter first. And let's use, um, now, OK. The Mini Moog has, um, and the Mini Max, actually, it's, there's a, um, a specific modeling here. And um, the filter is really, um, there's a specific design to this filter. Even though it's the same scope system, and some of the synths that um, come with the system, uh, they're actually built around scope uh, modular modules. But the Mini Max has its own design. So we're not going to be able to clone the exact sound of the Minimax, and we actually have no idea the, of the exact design of the Novation K stations filter. So we're just going to use our own. You know, we're going to use the modulars filter design, and that's perfectly fine, and it will have its own sound, which is cool. Filter, and I I like to use this filter because I do have a lot of DSP, and I don't mind having a poly filter with tons of options. Like, I don't know how many does it have, like 18 filter options, maybe less, maybe more. But you have two, four, and six pole low pass resonating or not. Same with high pass, band pass, and some other shapes, and like even phasers. And like, you have different complex filters going on inside. So it's really cool, and I like using this filter. So, and let's place it right here. So, we have our oscillators, we have our filter, we have um, our envelopes. Let's connect this envelope to the gate as well already. 
And um, now we need to be able to mix the oscillators and decide actually um, how we want to do that and what we want available going on between the oscillators. So um, the first thing, you, you if you look at the oscillators on the, um, on the Minimax, each of them has a volume pot. But you do have also a noise and uh, oscillator that is separate to the whole um, to the whole oscillator sections. I mean, you don't have to like sacrifice an oscillator for noise. You have three plus noise, and this actually happens. Um, you do have I don't know I don't remember where the parameter is. Okay, I don't know. I don't. Maybe it doesn't. I don't remember. Um, let's pretend it does. I guess we're gonna have it anyway. So let's take out a noise oscillator. Well, a noise generator because it's, it's like doesn't need anything to make it oscillate. Just always outputting either white or pink noise, and we're gonna put it right here above. So we already have um, the noise as well. So this is in here, and we have it. Um, another thing that is here on the Minimax, you see it has external uh, input volume. So it actually lets you um, process external signals if you want. And yeah, we can have our patch do that as well. It, I mean, it's not essential, but let's, let's have it available. Why not, you know? So let's take out uh, a four input mixer. first at the top, but let's have it be the last one, just so we know that logically this is OSC1, OSC2, OSC3, and then the noise, if you want noise. Connect the output of each of the oscillators into this mixer. So here we go. And, and the noise source are all connected now to the output of um, to the, to the mixer module, I'm sorry. Here we have the mixer module, and um, say that that both on the, oh, oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I forgot the external input. Now the external input, yeah, I did want to have four, because I do want, I want all the things going on inside in one module. I want to have um, my oscillators and my noise together is to separate the external input from all that because I, you know it's just easier if you want to you're going to use most likely either the external input or the synth sources so let's separate that let's put the um let's make like a, a way to choose between them so we have a static cross fade is it actually blends them so you can actually blend the signal but um, I th I'm thinking most of the time you'll have it either all the way to the left, or all all the way to the left, or all the way to the right. And the right would be um, your mon mon mono external input source from audio in. Oops. And um, all the way to the left will just be your synth voice. So. It, it's a bit of a novelty. I mean, why would you want that if you have like the whole modular system? If you want something to um, play with internal signals, then you can just build something that does that. But let's keep it on and let's just put it all the way to the left, set it aside, and remember that if we want to use the external input, we just take it to the right and it will work. it will work. So the whole mixing mechanism between the oscillators, the noise, and the external input is set up. One more thing, though, it has a feedback option, and the feedback option, what it does is it takes the sound coming out of the Minimax and feeds it back right back into the filter section, and this creates a sort of um, an overdriven, overloaded kind of sound. Um, it's it's a, you have to hear it to know what it does, but it's like it kind of thickens up the sound, dirty dirties it up a bit maybe, but it makes it. Um, fatter in some cases. So let's provide that option to um, have feedback going. Now the way you would do this is like this. The XMOD and feedback converter. Now in some modulars you won't need this module. I mean it always happens but it might happen like without you ever knowing it happened. Like the modular will know that you made such a connection and 
automatically adjust itself inside to compensate for for that. But uh, in the in scopes modular, you do need this module. What 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 do I mean? I mean that um, we're gonna output everything from the mixer into the filter. We're going to output the filter out, right? But what happens if we want to and then put it back in here. What will happen in the dig digital domain is it'll be like an infinite loop and it won't know how to handle that. So what we need to do is, let's take another static crossfade and remember that crossfade for the um, in, um, external feedback. That connector to the right side. The OSC section into the other side. And then we're going to go to the filter. So what we have now is a mechanism where all the way to the left will be no internal feedback, and all the way to the right will be with internal feedback. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Two really cool things using this internal feedback circuit, and some things are uh, some really popular since in history, including the um, I think the Roland the TB303 has something like this going on inside. Um, I might be wrong, but I'm suspecting it's something like that. And what I mean is it probably has like a circuit that is kind of like going from the from the output. It's going first, then to the feedback, because we need feedback. And then only then it's going um, back, being fed back into the signal path. So the feedback is distorted, and that can provide a pretty grungy and messed up sound, that, like harmonic distortion sort of thing. And yeah, it's a nice trick. And we're gonna um, listen to listen to it later. I'm not exactly sure, you know. I'm gonna. I don't know if I ever made this particular connection. And this is what's cool with modular because I've had this system for 10 years. And I'm like a real junkie, and I use it all the time. But you know, I don't know if I did this yet. So I'm going to have to kind of listen to it and see what it does. Distortion module. Oops, I'm sorry. I copy pasted the filter by mistake. I wanted to copy paste the distortion. So yeah, this is let's let's kind of let's organize it a little better. So we had um, hold on, hold on. We had. It's I did a mistake. You see, I connected the mixer. Not that we also had the um, external input circuit. So this is what should be going um, into, uh, I made a mess. There's the first distortion. So it's going to go into the distortion. There we go. That's it. To go, you can choose either soft or hard distortion. Do you want to switch for that? Yeah, let's add it. And the synth really. You see, we've not even finished, and look how much we've um. Let's see, but why not? Here it is. You can choose hard or soft distortion on this one. The one in your direct signal path, and then it's going to go into this crossfade. And remember, this crossfade con controls the amount of internal feedback. And for the internal feedback distortion. Um, let's just leave it on hard for now. Uh, if you want, you can put on a switch. I've shown like option with the switch, one option without the switch. Doesn't matter so much. Organizing it a little bit to be able to see that this is the actual final thing. This is without, this is with, and this belongs. I'm separating it just a little bit because I want to know that this belongs to the internal um, circuit. So we've set up the filter, um, and the sound is already a signal flow is already going all the way and into the filter. Let's see if we want to add other things. It looks pretty fine to me. I'm almost done with the signal flow. And maybe we have some inspiration. The Novation does have um, two things that we're not going to do in this particular patch, but in future patches. 
the Novation has FM between um, the oscillators, between OSC 2 and 3, if I remember correctly, and um, sync between um, OSCs, either 2 and 3 or 1 and 2. I can check that, but uh, my point is um, we're not going to do either FM or sync in this patch. I just want to, you to know that it is available both in the in scope system, both in the DX um, sense using the FM operators and both in the kind of virtual analog sense of FM oscillators using flexors, oscillators, and I'll show it at a later time. And sync, of course, is also available. You have sync, master, and slave OSCs uh, available as well. Keep it like this for the sake of um, this uh, particular tutorial. We have all this connected. Um, let's see, if, just checking just once more if there's something else I want to add uh, before I go on forward. Not in this signal chain. Remember, we do have to con make more connections, but I just wanted to see if I'm ready to leave like the audio chain VCA. And the VCA is the last, the last connection before um, going out into the effects section. Now, everything uh, that is going on inside the patch, if you set it on multiple voices, it'll work as a polyphonic patch, and the, polyphony, poly, the amount of polyphony will only be um, limited by uh, uh, the number of DSPs you have, uh, which, like, on scope, one voice, and um, we have, we've used a little bit of DSP, but I have, like, a lot, so uh, it, it's fine. I mean, it'll run, like, on 10 voices, you know, uh, without any problems, I think. So um, we've reached the VCA, and everything is polyphonic if we wanted to. And I've mentioned this before in scope. Um, you need a module called a poly out that sums all the all the voices inside and turns them into one voice. Um, and then without it, it just won't work polyphonically. If you if you just output from here outside. Then and you play and you put it on a number of voices and you play like a chord, you won't hear the chord. You will hear just one note. So you need this poly poly out module. It's um, absolutely essential on a technical level to have it inside this patch. We could right now connect it to the poly out and uh, take care of a few more connections and it would be a working synth. But um, if we look at both the mini max and the novation, they have effects inside. What I normally do is I connect a um, multi-effect out here, but I want to show you how you can actually, in modular, you do have these effects available inside this modular, and in, in most modular systems, you have um, effects available right as modules. So let's get like into a cloning mode for a second. So we have delay, reverb, chorus, um, distortion, EQ, panning, vocoder. Um, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to do it this way, and, you, and I'll, tell, I'll tell you why. I'll give my reasoning for it. If I load um, a stereo insert patch, okay, okay, and let's say I open um, separate uh, effects. Let's say I open the, the like, tempo delay. I could clone it exactly the same as here. I could put a, a tempo delay. I could open um, a chorus. What is? Oh, I could open everything that I want from here, or I could just like totally clone it. Whatever. Why not? Okay. If I do it this way and make all these connections, it's pretty much hardwired. I mean, you could obviously go into your patch and like delete connections and then rearrange them in in another order. But what for? You know, if I if I if I just have this, I have a multi effect right inside the patch, and it has six slots and I can insert um, tons of effects from scope. I would need to actually have them inside the patch unless I want them to be able to MIDI sync to the patch. So just for the sake of this MIDI sync, let's do just one effect inside the patch. Let's have a tempo delay. Sync it inside the patch. So um, let's connect the back end here. Let's, connect the, let's leave the multi effect in there. Let's use that. Let's connect it. And let's connect the delay to into this um, multi-effect. Last thing happening in our chain. And then, as you see the delay, you have here the time knob. It is in milliseconds. And there's a little button here called 
oh sorry this is the cross cross feedback and here here's the button I wanted this is the external frequency button and if you click it then it'll be receiving external frequency just like the LFOs are um, where are they the LFOs are receiving external frequency from this frequency divider once we connect it so here we go It's it's really cool. It works like a really um, cool um, double-sided tempo delay with cro with the ability to um, cross fade the delays and with different divisions on either side. So it's a small module, but it's totally awesome. You know, it's it can do and it can get into really high feedback. So yeah, let's just keep it in there. We can like even though on the scope effect you can also set BPM, but inside your patch, why not? So we have the delay connected and nothing is going into it yet because I do want to connect some other things. So we're not going to do the chorus flanger and all that. I've shown that, blah, blah, blah. Okay. One um, other thing in our chain, uh, neither the uh, Mini Moog or the um, Novation have it, but I, I like it on some of my other synths. I like it on the AN1X and um, on some other stuff like the Scopes Pro Odyssey, uh, actually the real Odyssey probably had that as well. And what I'm talking about is like a high pass filter at the end of your chain. Uh, maybe 24 dB is too steep. 24. I do have um, other high passes in Flexor, but I want to show you the basic Creamware modules at the moment. So let's be mellow, you know, let's take a 6 dB high pass. If we want later, we can um, change it to a 24, yeah. So um, one thing I want to get into now uh, for the first time right now, all these modules as you see are blue. If I right click on them, I have the option that says switch to polyphonic mode, switch to single mode. Right now it's in polyphonic mode. Polyphonic mode is the blue modules. If I switch it to single mode, it's a monophonic module. Now it doesn't really matter, you know, you can have your whole patch, you can want a monophonic patch, leave it on one voice like it is right now and keep polyphonic um, modules and it'll work. It's fine. The reason um, the reason to have them polyphonic obviously is if you want polyphonic you're not going to have um, monophonic modules. But the reason to make modules monophonic is that it saves a lot of DSP. So um, and sometimes it is a uh, consideration even if even with a big system if you want a, f a few things running then yeah you should save DSP. So with this high pass, it is after the poly out. So it doesn't need to be polyphonic, right? So we can right click on it, switch to single mode. And uh, even though it's just a simple 6 dB high pass and is not a DSP hungry um, module, just wanted to show you that after the poly out, whatever comes after the poly out should like instinct, instinctively, you know, it's, it's monophonic. If it's after the poly out, it's monophonic, end of story. So just make it, just make it monophonic. So, and they call it single mode. So switch to single mode uh, from this high pass outside. And let's go from the poly out to the high pass. And let's go from the um, CA to the poly out. chain is connected oh except one thing you see this e-sync okay why did I not connect this let's decide right now you know what we have to we still have to connect the um, the pitch the pitches for the, um, the, the the pitch modifiers for the oscillators and we have to connect whatever modifiers we want on the filter let's start with the simplest thing the key follow which just comes from the MVC there we go we made the connection now the key follow knob will follow your keyboard notes um, a setting of 100 on the key follow is, uh, and then and then 200 is um, double the key follow, something like that. You can you can check the scope manual for the exact settings of the key follow, if you want to. <clears throat> and then let's use one LFO. Uh, let's dedicate one LFO to the filter, and let's use the trick that I've shown. I've shown it in another video. If you take a low pass, um, 6 dB low pass filter, and pass the LFO into it. Then it'll smooth out um, rough edges if you do it on sample and hold or on square. And it'll just take uh, care of a little bit of clicking. You can actually do this um, also by fading in and out. Smooth the edges of the LFO a bit. Um, 
but if you want to do it in one knob, um, yeah, I do. It, I I don't know. I do it with this, just because. Really, you can do it with this as well. You can just fade in and out until it doesn't click. Um, it's much. It's just easier to set up if you if you just like put it on sample and hold, find the spot where it clicks, and just like leave it there, and that's it. You're set. I don't really need actual fading like, but if I do, it's there in addition. So it's cool. Why not? So we're gonna give it this smoother. And we're going to attach um, the LFO to, let's attach it to the second one, because we'll, we'll give um, the first uh, modulation input we'll use for an envelope. LFO to the filter. And let's also dedicate a specific envelope to the filter. Now, do we want um, do we want one pitch envelope? Do we want the filter envelope to be like, in the, um, like on innovation, where it's called the modulation envelope? And you can actually, like, route the amount to different oscillators or do we want each oscillator to have its own envelope or do we want to dedicate this to the filter but have another envelope that goes um, into all that is like a dedicated um, pitch envelope but for all the oscillators together now we can decide let's do it you know let's have one let's let's do it like let's compromise in this case okay let's have um, a dedicated filter envelope but have the pitch envelope be for all the oscs no, you can go wild, of course. You can do like everything separate for each OSC. And I guess we'll make a video on a mega synth. We'll make like one one video where we'll make like a synth that has like that is like you know like I don't know the kings of France in the medieval ages, like total corruption synth. But in this synth, yeah, this is corrupted enough, I think. So it's not like we're not corrupted here. Um, let's also. Uh, uh, thing with the low pass to the um, first LFO. It's one LFO for all the OSCs in this example. So you have a dedicated um, pitch LFO, but it's for all the oscillators. You do have, of course, like I've shown before, uh, uh, we did use, the thing we did do is we did use a different um, modifier module for each OSC. So while it's the same LFO and the same envelope, uh, the amounts separate for each oscillator so you do have like it's pretty nice you do have um, a, a nice compromise because you do have control a little bit over the amounts separately so it is nice um, so yeah we've made these connections you can see everything is like pretty much connected um, the one thing that we didn't do is pulse width now um, pulse width only has one input and I'll show in other videos why it doesn't matter you can you can mix control signals like you can send a mixer into this input that has both an envelope and an LFO and it's fine. But let's dedicate one thing. Let's use, I think a, an LFO would be would be cooler for pulse width. I think you'll agree with me. So, so let's use um, that. So uh, I don't know how to have these cables straightened out. Don't know why. Like sort of some sort of obsessive compulsive thing with these cables. I just got to have them blue and straight. Don't know why. You can use separate LFOs for each pulse width, but yeah, let's use one. And we've connected it, and then let's make it a gated LFO just because you know we have the connection. Why not? And, um. Oh, we ran out of um separate um, frequency dividers. So like we can either connect it to a frequency divider that is already used by one of the LFOs, uh, um, uh, one of the sides of the delay, or we can just open another frequency divider. And yeah, this is a bit corrupted because we're only going to use one of its outputs. And there's going to be three lonely outputs from the frequency divider. But yeah, I think I think it should have a dedicated uh, divider. This is a uh, you know, we're making techno, trance music. You need, you want everything, at least the option to have it synced. So it's going to have its own timing for sure. So we've done that. I think everything is connected. I'm okay. The e-sync is not connected. I've mentioned in uh, other um, other videos, the scope it needs which is called is e-sync adder. Every time you see this e thing, every single e, 
from every single envelope. It doesn't matter. You can leave them one. The, the order doesn't matter, but I'm just like a geek. So it's, yeah. And that goes. To, um, connect the output of the async model back to the MVC. And what it does is um, make sure that like everything is in sync. The envelopes are in sync across polyphonic um, voices. So all you, you just got to make this connection. It's just something you need to do. Um, you know what? I, what I don't like is I'm kind of like always stuck with where, where do I stick this module? Yeah, let's just stick it down there. Um, I think I'm looking at it. I'm trying to see if there is something missing from the patching. I think there isn't. Let's check if, um, if it makes sound. So where's the patch? No, it's not this one. This is the patch. Um, my MIDI keyboard, not from a sequencer. I just want to check if it works. Hooray! You can even hear the delay. And noise is turned on. No, it's not. Let's turn off our um our routing for a minute and put it like on solo. Okay. Which is um works already, so you can play with it. Let's get a little low pass in there. I'm trying to look. Um, I'm trying just to see. Um, let's bring in that feedback. It does do something. I don't know if it's doing what we intended it to do exactly. Kind of. It's actually narrowing it because it's kind of. I think it's causing cancellation a little bit. I'm going to have to test this feedback circuit a little more um, a bit later. But just to show you, the synth works. Oh, I moved around. What I wanted to do is just detune this off. So this is kind of, uh, yeah, you can do a lot of things with a machine like this. You have a three OSC synth with uh, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of modulation options and separate modulations. Um, just imagine how it would be like if we would actually, you can make it into a super synth, add FM between the oscillators, add sync between the oscillators. And you know you can always mess around with like stuff like we did here, even if it doesn't do what you intended it to do. Um, you can always experiment because it's modular, and this is the whole point of the system is to always experiment. And you can always go like, oh no, I don't want this. You know, I want another envelope. I want another. I want another um, LFO. I want this LFO to modulate this LFO, and I want this LFO to modulate this envelope's decay. And then I want this envelope to modulate the pitch, but then I want the pitch to like be split into two section two, whatever, guys, whatever. Um, so. Look forward to showing you more things in our next videos and um, have fun with scope and with modular.